just file that? That'd be great. Oh, hey! Didn't see you there. I'm Billy Davis. You may remember me from such classes as oil and gas fundamentals, or aerospace fundamentals, or heat transfer. Well, there's many other educational ventures I'm sure that you remember me from. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about oil shale. We're going to talk about how oil is produced from shale rock and the history of oil shale as well as how we get it and it's drilled and the extraction. So let's get right into it. So shale oil refers to shale which is a rocky substance that has liquid and gases trapped inside of it. Like if you see a zoom in here you have the pores marked in red and then the green is all the liquid and gas that's trapped into it. And this is due to two different qualities called porosity and permeability. Where porosity is how much of the rock is open space, like open area or void, a uh, fraction to how much is taken up by the pores. And permeability is how easily it will let liquids or gases pass through it. I'm rich! Now, the hydrocarbons that are inside of it are called kerogen, which you could read if I had a better marker. So, what's a good way that we can remember the term kerogen? I think a little three second clip will help. There's a lot of history to be had about oil shale. Did you know that it was actually one of the first sources of mineral used by humans? It turns out that a lot of people were happening upon these rocks and finding out, oh my gosh, there's oil inside of these. Uh, the earliest recorded use was in Switzerland and Australia by the early 14th century. So it's actually been around for a very long time. In fact, in 1596, uh, Frederick I, Duke of Wurttemberg, wrote of its healing properties as a physician. Oh no, here comes a lizard. He's got a rather big stick. What do I do? I could hit this tree. No. Oh no! Now he's biting me! It hurts so much, I gotta get him off. I know what I'll do. The healing rock! That should turn him back into a human again. Take this, you big lizard! Uh, yeah! It worked! Hooray! Shell oil was also used to light the streets of Modena, Italy at the turn of the 17th century. Modern shell extraction occurred in France in the 1830s and even in Scotland in the 1840s. It was used as a fuel, lubricant, and a lamp oil. Uh, the Industrial Revolution had created an additional demand for lighting, and it also served as a replacement for the very scarce and expensive whale oil that they had used for some of these other applications. Oversight begins with the permitting and construction of a well site and continues through drilling and closure of the well. ODNR inspectors are on site to ensure that well site construction is completed in accordance with Ohio's stringent laws and regulations. Once the operator has met the required permitting and site construction rules and regulations, drilling can begin. An ODNR inspector is on site to witness the start of the drilling process. Ohio leads the country in inspector notification requirements. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources must be notified before every critical phase of the well construction process, including the setting and cementing of each casing string. Steel pipe casings are inserted to protect the groundwater and isolate the oil and gas resources. 
Proper well construction and cementing of the casings is essential to the protection of Ohio's groundwater. And this is why ODNR inspectors place the highest priority on being present during these processes. Ohio is one of the first states to mandate cemented intermediate casing in every horizontal shale gas well. This means that every shale well in Ohio will have a minimum of four cemented casing strings. The metal casings isolate the groundwater from the oil and gas resources that will be produced by the well. The layers of cement serve a dual purpose in that they both secure the casings and prevent gas from leaking to the surface. Once inspectors determine that the casings have been properly set to protect the groundwater aquifers, drilling can continue. The completed well will be drilled up to one and a half miles below the ground surface. This distance is equal to nearly five and a half Empire State Buildings stacked on top of one another. At this point in the drilling process, numerous layers and thousands of feet of impermeable rock separate the freshwater aquifers and ground's surface from the end of the well bore. Perforation of the well can now begin. A perforating device is lowered into the well bore and an electric charge is sent down the line, creating small holes in the casing, cement, and targeted rock layer. This process can be repeated multiple times along the length of the well. Once the perforation process is complete, hydraulic fracturing of the well can begin. Hydraulic fracturing fluid is injected into the borehole, creating fractures in the targeted shale formation. These cracks act as a pathway for the gas to enter the casing and flow back to surface. Horizontally fractured well pads can be used for multiple wells. This means they leave a much smaller footprint on the natural environment than traditional vertical wells. Once the wells are drilled, the rig will be replaced by small wellheads, which will remain while the well is productive. Once the well is no longer in production, the operator must apply to have the well plugged. ODNR regulations require the owner of the well to restore the location to a natural state. All structures and storage units must be removed. ODNR's mission is and will remain to ensure a balance between the wise use and protection of our natural resources for the benefit of all. This Rock. Rock. Hydrogen's just walking along, do 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 do, and then he stops and sees the reactant, and he's like, "Boy, fight me, bub." And then hydrogen's like, "But I really don't want to." And he's like, "Well, you gotta fight me. We gotta react to each other." And he's like, "But I'm really not feeling it right now. I mean, I got Netflix at home. I have other things to do." And then nickel at the bottom's like, "Boy, you're a pansy if you can't do it." And then hydrogen's like, "Oh, it's on." 